In this episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about a precious cinnamon roll, a precious California roll, engaging in piracy, (laughs) taking the legs, (laughs) and running. (laughs) In our discussion of In Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens. Hey everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult books, series, authors, and voice actors that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire, and today we're going to discuss In Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens with superfan Annie! Yay! Yo ho! Yo ho ho, ladies! (laughs) I'm so excited to be here. Yay! I know I kind of invited myself in. I think Claire just meant to ask me for would you rather, and I was like, but I want to do everything. And we can't <laughs> deny you that, no, can we? Can't. You can't deny We cannot. Vigilante anything. No, we cannot. Such soft touches. Standard disclaimer. If you haven't read this book, please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read or listened and don't want to be spoiled, stop listening to us and go read or listen to the book. Then come back. If you haven't done this but want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just love us all so much that you don't care about any of that, then listen up. Yay! Very excited to read this one because we're all piratical. Check us out. Gorgeous. 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 We really gorgeous. are. We really are. There's no scurvy. There's no scurvy. Mm-mm. We've got all of our teeth. Hey, I was about to say we have all of our teeth. We all also have all of our eyeballs. Yes. This is true. Um, I was att- going to attempt an eye patch, but you know, as a person who wears glasses, that's probably not a good thing. You're like already. I limited. do have a very spangly eye patch from. <laughs> Twinings. Yes. From <laughs> Charles Twining of the Twining Twinings. Whatever we kept saying twining, that episode. Twining, <laughs> twining, twining. We latched. We did. Like barnacles. We did. We do that. We tend to do that. The cool term. <laughs> I would like to say thank you to the lovely ladies at Spirit Halloween who went to the back to find me a pirate hat that did not have red on it because I didn't have we got a different color scheme going. And mm. so they went and dug around in a box and found me this one. It's beautiful. It's kind of them. Oh, no, my feather. I have a feather in my cap, but it has fallen a little bit. There we go. There it is. Yay. There it is. We need to add a feather for future reference. Maybe it needs to go the other way. Does it need to go out? Is it jauntier if it goes out? What? Yeah, we'll go. I don't know what's happening. It's fine. Yeah. Everything. M- mine is craft. Fine. There is hot glue everywhere. <laughs> but that's because the store was closed by the time I would have been able to get there. I do match with Scully Joe, so true. I'm you fine do. with this. Scully Joe was looking fine today. I saw him. He was. He was looking fine. He's very handsome. Excited. He's very excited. He's handsome. He's very Anywho. Anywho, we should probably Anyone get into this. Adults? We probably, probably should. What have you got? I found an interview on kategoodwin.com with F.T. Lukens. They were asked, what would you do if you spent the day with Tal? Where would you go to eat, hang out, relax, etc.? And I pulled this question because I really just wanted to ask it of you two in addition to learning what F.T. Lucan said. It definitely would not be on a boat. In the opening pages of In Deeper Waters, the reader finds Tal throwing up over the side of his brother's ship. He's not quite a fan of being on the water, so wherever we went, it would be on land. Tal would be most comfortable hanging out in his family's castle or the village outside of the keep. I would love to meet Tal's siblings as well, since I think they would be fun to be around. Yes. That doesn't really answer the question, though. I mean, it kind of does, but I feel like I feel like we should invite Tal to hang out with us 
instead of latching onto him and hanging out in a castle. So... Well, exactly. I mean, if you read the story as well, he's happy to be out of the castle. Yes. So let's get him on the podcast. Sure. And go to Waffle House. Yes. <laughs> sure. Everything leads to the Waffle House. It really does. It <laughs> That's really, my really answer. Does. <laughs> I like it. What do you think he would eat at the Waffle House? Well, I, 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 ooh. I think it would all be quite new foods, you know. I don't know if they have waffles and hash browns. In, in ye, in ye old pirate times. Yeah. Do I remember in the story somewhere somebody made biscuits? There'll be ship's biscuits. And, and I remember thinking, do they have, do, do they have? Biscuits? It won't be like right, scones. It won't be like scones never... or the biscuits that you will know. They'll yeah. be hardier, longer lasting. They'll probably be the kind of thing that you need to soak in order to, you know, reconstitute them. Okay. And I could be confusing this with something else I've read this week. <laughs> I feel like they ate a lot of sausages at one point and then he vomited them all up. Yep. He did a lot of vomiting. He did, yeah. he did a lot of vomiting. I mean, I guess that's how you know it's true love. You, you know, you keep vomiting and they st- they stay with they're you. They're still there. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> they're still there. You know it's yeah. true love when the other person farts in front of you. <laughs> oh, well, we can't have that. <laughs> we can't. We can't have that right now. Let's What's stick with item, puking. Linda? What? Where would I take? Yeah. Tal? You can come to Waffle House with me. I mean, yeah, I guess I probably would. I I think it would be exciting to take him, you know, to a to a good restaurant. Not necessarily Waffle House, maybe yeah. something a little classier. Like, Even though Waffle House is the classiest of all places. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Or you know what? You know what else would be fun? You know how, like, all of the mini golf courses are pirate themed for whatever reason? I would take yes. him to a pirate themed mini golf. Yes. <laughs> That's like what, there I, you what I would do. There That's you go. I, do. Yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it. All right, cool. <laughs> do we have initial thoughts? Uh, I have had this book for over a year, well over a year. I've struggle to find time to sit and read it so I'm, I was so glad to actually finally have the excuse to read it to fit in with our book club theme so you know pirate theme um it's a subtle theme this week it is so I so bought it immediately after you showed a picture of it on social media because the cover it's beautiful it's, it's a beautiful so pretty cover. it is yes it, just gorgeous so yeah and then when i was kind of waiting and then claire sent me a message and said did i want to talk about pirates with y'all and i was like Ooh, i will wait and talk about pirates i'll wait and read it then so so we've been we've been saving it for yo ho ahoy baby nice excellent excellent yeah i gotta be honest with you too that i just got dragged into the deep on this one <laughs> <laughs> I walked, a I walked. kraken came up out of yeah. the ocean, wrapped all its tentacles around you, and just yeah. yank. Yeah, I almost walked the plank with it, but I didn't. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I regret saying all of that. All right. No, don't. Because actually, I'm going to link into my surprise in our discussion. It, that what you've just said links into what my surprise is. So we'll. We'll put a pin in that thought after okay. we've read. Okay. Everything. Okay. Well, let's let's get started with the summary then. Don't throw up. 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 Tao hates the sea. He is at the ship's railing with a death grip when his older brother Garrett calls to him and saunters over. Tao is part of the royal family of Hearth, the fourth of five children, and his older siblings are set in their royal roles. Isa is next in line to the throne, Garrett is the head of the navy, and Kest is a renowned scholar. 
slash bird. But Tal still feels adrift. No pun intended. His coming-of-age tour will hopefully help him grow into his own, and he's anxious to get started despite the nausea. But Garrett has had to stop to investigate a burning boat. Amongst the wreckage, one of Garrett's crew spots a crest, and Tal recognizes it belonging to a previous king of Aseta. His sister, Issa, is set to marry Aseta's prince, which means Tal has been forced to study everything about the place instead of anything interesting, like, you know, magic, for instance. Also found on the burning ship is a chest of newly minted coins, and more interestingly, a survivor. The boy, Athlan, has been shackled to the derelict craft's mast. While Tal is talking to Athlan and promising to keep him safe, the winds change, warning of an incoming storm. This causes magical sparks to flit between Tal's fingers, which Athlan sees. <gasps> Ooh. Gasp! Oh. Gasp. Garrett questions Athlan, who gives him very little information other than to stake a claim on the chest of coins because he found it fair and square. Yeah. Royal chests don't work like that. No. All the while, Tal is shaken. He accidentally let someone see him use magic. It was a mistake, but it still breaks his promise he made to his mother to keep his ability hidden. Meanwhile, Garrett has given orders to get Athlan and the chest on board the Warbird and to cut the derelict ship free. Tal is made to look after Athlan and try to get more information out of him. In the hold of Garrett's ship, Athlan complains his legs are tired from being on them so long and begs to be set free and says he doesn't see why Tal doesn't just use his magic to get the iron fetter off his ankle. Tal is wary of his magic and of keeping it secret. He is the only person alive with magic and is worried what others will think about him should they find out. There are already rumors circulating through the different kingdoms about him and whether he has magic, like his very evil great-grandfather, or if he's just frail and weak. Eventually, Athlan reveals that the derelict ship's crew fled after the mast was struck by lightning three days ago, but he'd been aboard for several weeks. Then he makes a deal with Tal. If Tal breaks the irons on his leg, which are causing him great pain, Athlan will tell them all about the chest of coins. Tal manages to magically burst the fetter apart, and Athlan is so elated that he grabs Tal's wonderfully magical hands and presses a kiss to his palm. Oh, Ooh. swoon! <laughs> now he is free to go on deck and is finally able to get some light and air. Once above deck, Athlan promptly dives over the rail and into the sea. <laughs> Tal is distressed by Athlan throwing himself overboard, so Garrett consoles him and tells Tal it is a good thing he cares so much as the last person to wield magic. Their great-grandfather did not care at all. Tal's being able to wield magic is rare, but it's not the only kind of magic in the world. His brother Kest, for instance, can shift into a bird. And tales used to be told of the existence of other magical beings like unicorns and mermaids. Mermaids? <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> A short time later, the warbird docks at the port city of Baton, and Tal goes to explore with Shay, the royal family's most trusted soldier, following him. Tal hears a familiar voice and spots Athlan in the crowd, trying to barter for medicine with pearls and sea glass. The merchant is greedy and says the pearls are poor quality, so Tal intercedes and sets the man straight. His royal signet ring gives a very clear signal to the merchant not to mess with him and to do what he says. In gratitude for the medicine needed to heal a friend's sick mother, Athlan gives Tal a shark tooth and takes him to his friend Dara's house in a poorer area of the town. Dara, she isn't impressed by the prince and is downright rude to Tal when he expresses concern for her mother. The other royals have never done anything for folk like her, so they have not earned her respect. In addition to her rudeness, 
Dara knows something about Athlan and mocks Tal for his ignorance. Before Tal leaves, Athlan promises to thank him properly. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Back on the ship, <laughs> Cast arrives in bird form. He was sent by the Queen to check on her youngest son after Tal sent her a missive. There is a piece of parchment in his mother's study that he can magically transmit letters to. Kess also updates his brothers on the arrival of Issa's betrothed under much pomp and ceremony. At breakfast, Tal tells Garrick he wants to spend the day giving out medicine to the people to help with the illness that is spreading through town. This is not the way that Garrett spent his coming of age tour. As Tal is getting ready to head out, one of the sailors on their ship calls him a perversion and attacks him. But thankfully, Shay intercedes, though the sailor gets away. This does not put Tal off from helping the people, and with a list of supplies provided by Dara, he spends the day giving out medicine. After his good deed is complete, Tal, Garrett, and Shay head to a tavern where Tal finds Athlan. Badly singing body sea shanty. <laughs> he greets him, but their exchange doesn't go well. Athlan says Tal is too soft to be a prince, which puts Tal in a bad mood, and so he heads back to the ship. He wants to go alone, but Shay won't allow it. As a compromise, she gives Tal her dagger and follows 20 paces behind, so of course something happens to him. <laughs> Athlan pops up, pulls Tal into the shadows, and takes him to his sea cave home. Oh. The cave is covered in trinkets and jewels, all of which remind Athlan of his family. He tells Tal the one he has picked up reminds Athlan of his sister's tail. Wait. Tail? <coughs> tail? Tail. He said tail, tail. right? Tail. He said mm-hmm. tail. tail. He, he said, said tail. tail. He said tail. Athlan finally tells Tal why he was chained on the pirate ship. He was forced to dive for the treasure chest dropped into the bay because he's a merman. Ooh. The last merman. Ooh. Oh! Ooh. At this revelation, he goes into the pool and shows Tal his beautiful red tail. Athlan then tells the story of how he lost his family. One day, the sea floor shifted and cracked, and he was separated from his family. He tried to find them, but the water around the cracks was too hot and burned his scales. Then, dead merfolk filled the sea. Ooh. Athlan was so lonely and desperate to find his family that he made a deal with the sea witch to have legs, but didn't tell Tal the bargain he made with her. After this tale, no pun intended, <laughs> Tal needs to return to the ship and Athlan escorts him from the surf. When Tal reaches the dock, however, he is attacked by some ruffians and a wild cat shifter. Despite his attempts to fight back with Shea's dagger, he is kidnapped. <laughs> Tal wakes up injured and imprisoned on a ship, his signet ring gone. He could break free from his prison, but can't re- risk the pirates finding out about his magic. The captain, Zeph, tells Tal she picked him up for the ransom, assassination, war, and magic. <gasps> he learns that his kidnapping has something to do with his sister Issa's wedding but he isn't sure if it is to ensure it goes through or fails Zeph assures Tal she will keep him alive but if he wants to eat he must work before the labour begins Tal is taken to see the healer Poppy who is nice but pretty intense about the magical folk of the sea and believes in mermaids and the sea witch Desperately wants to meet her. I mean, I kind of want to meet the sea witch too. I'm not. Oh, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell. You know she's interesting. Yeah. The days turn to weeks of backbreaking labor and abuse for Tal at the hands of his captors. They are determined to get him to reveal that he has magic and are trying to punish it out of him. He's almost broken and keeps looking at the sea for a familiar tale. One night in his cell, Tal spots a scrap of sail and uses his magic. He wills it to move into his cell. He then takes the shark tooth, 
cuts his finger and uses his blood as ink to write his family, telling them that he has been kidnapped, but to continue with the wedding and sends the message by magic to the parchment on his mother's desk. Zeph visits and sows seeds of doubt in Tal, and Poppy visits with water, but he knows he can't trust her as she also pushes him to use his magic. Finally, Poppy reveals they are in the Moraline Sea. At last, he has a location to tell his family. Hooray! <laughs> Two nights later, a sound wakes Tal. It's a bird! It's Kest. He shifts to human and tells Tal that Garrett will be here by sunrise and that he only needs to hold on for a few more hours. Shifting back to a bird, Kest flies off, though Tal begs him not to go. When Garrett's ship is on the horizon, the pirates prepare themselves. Zeph doesn't believe Tal is magic, considering, you know, he's told her over and over and over again that he's not, and then suffered all the punishment for it. It's a shame, she says. If he was magic, they were going to pass him to Ossetia to use as a weapon in Issa's betrothed Prince Emmerich's name. Now they're just gonna kill him and blame the kingdom of Mistin, who protested the alliance, and start a war. Magic boils in Tal, and he releases a pillar of fire, and the ship starts to burn. Zeph cuffs Tal in iron restraints, and as she goes to kill him, Kest flies in and attacks. As the ship starts to go down, Tal spots Athlan in the water, and he grabs Tal and manages to get him into a jolly boat. Tal wakes up cold. Still cuffed, but in Athlan's court. Athlan urges Tal to use his magic to break free, but Tal feels extremely guilty for using his magic so violently against the pirates. They're freaking After pirates! Some... <laughs> they kidnapped you! Burn them! Burn them! They... You're allowed! You're already be the pirate code! <laughs> The pirate code says if they if they do this to you, you are allowed. Any means. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Murder them. Murder them all. Yar, the car pirate code say murder. Yar. Car. Yar. <laughs> After some gentle coaxing, Athlan convinces Tal to snap the irons, but he's not doing very well, and Athlan can't look after him by himself, so he enlists Dara to help. As Dara is about to toss Tal's shirt, he grabs the shark tooth from its pocket, and Athlan is shocked he still has it. <coughs> Dara insists that Tal must go home, and he's willing but too afraid to travel by boat. He needs to talk to his mother about the alliance since he learned that Zeph kidnapped him to use as a weapon in Emmerich's war. A little later, Dara and Athlan come to Tal with news. Tal has been officially declared dead. What, what? Not murdered. Though, though murdered, not assassinated, so not politically motivated. Yet. <laughs> the perpetrators have been captured or killed, but there is a bounty for information, and the townsfolk have implicated Athlan. What? No. What no. Crazy you people. Whoa. You keep him safe. He is precious. Has, he's a precious little cinnamon roll. Athlan has heard that Issa has married Prince Emmerich and that the wedding was brought forward so as to not conflict with the funeral rites. On the plus side, he found Shay's dagger in the sea. <sighs> He's just a little treasure hunter. He's a precious little cinnamon roll. It's shiny! I found it! He is a very fishy cinnamon roll, though. <laughs> I don't want to eat that cinnamon roll. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> He's a California roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are agreeing. Tal is a precious cinnamon roll and Athlan is a precious California roll. Yes. I yes. love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm hungry, but I love it. <laughs> Athlan and Dara nurse Tal, if not back to health, at least enough so he's ready to travel home. This is fortunate, as Dara tells them about seeing a funeral procession of kingdom knights and soldiers led by Shay. Tao needs to speak to Shay, but Dara refuses to go get her because she's 
scary. And <laughs> we'll think Dara had something to do with Tal's death. She still refuses, even when Tal tells her she'll be safe from Shay if she mentions the crush that Shay has on the second prince. Ooh. Ooh. Adlin volunteers instead and, wearing a ludicrous disguise, steals a bag of apples in front of Shay, which causes her to chase him straight to Tal's meeting spot. Shay grabs Tal, hugs him, and tells him Garrett and Kest searched the sea and the burning ship for him until it nearly killed them. Tal tells Shay that he was rescued by Athlan, and he and Dara nursed him while he recovered. Meanwhile, Tal's death is invoking sympathy for the impeding war after it is declared an assassination, and Tal needs to stop it. Tal tells Shay that Mistin isn't to blame, it's Prince Emmerich, but Shay doesn't believe him and says that Emmerich couldn't find his way out of a rose garden and that Issa picked him because he's easy on the eyes, easily managed, and they share genuine affection. I'm glad that that is mentioned. She's like, nah, he's pretty and he's dumb, but they like each other. <laughs> but first he's pretty and second he's dumb. As a ruler, <laughs> I think that's very important qualities. You're in this order... He used to be pretty, he used to be dumb, oh, but it is you, sweetheart. Yeah, I, mean, I guess we can get along, it's fine. <laughs> Tal doesn't believe any of this, and he insists he needs to get home, and orders Shay to leave a horse for him the next morning. The following morning, Dara gives Tal and Athlan a bag of food and a map she has marked with their route, ordering them not to leave the path, to only make small fires and to take care. They are off! Athlan's legs hurt as they ride and they get worse as the journey progresses. He insists it is only because he is not used to riding a horse, but Tal is not sure that that's the real reason and is uh, feeling the loss of their intimacy. <laughs> In Athlan's cave, they became close, but now Athlan is pulling away from him. Tal regrets his fear of travelling by boat because if they had, they would be making port soon instead of having three more days travel ahead. Plus, Athlan would have the relief of the sea, which Tal is convinced is the real reason for Athlan's leg pains. No, oh, he's wrong. Oh. Oh. Athlan can sense a storm coming, but Tal dismisses his warning. When the violent storm hits, they are forced to find shelter at a tavern. For a coin, the tavern boy gives Tal the news and he tells him of the rumor of Tal's magic and that his assassination was falsified so the queen can go to war. In their room, Tal and Athlan share a couple of kisses Aww. before Athlan pulls away and leaves. Now it seems that Prince Tal and his responsibilities may be the cause of Athlan's distress. <laughs> Tal follows Athlan, and he finds him hiding behind a curtain, because the pirates who kidnapped him are there. As they both hide, the cat shifter from Tal's kidnapping dramatically strides into the tavern in her human form. Tal and Athlan listen to their conversation and learn that the cat shifter's mistress wants to expand her borders, and to do so, they're gonna go after another of Tal's family. The bird. <gasps> no! No, no! No, cats! No! no. no. <laughs> Suddenly, the curtain is pulled back and the cat shifter stands over Tal and Athlan. Not recognizing Tal and not knowing who Athlan is, she assumes that they're finding company in each other. Ooh. So wink, she wink. throws them a coin and tells them to get a room. <laughs> Tal and Athlan don't need to be told twice. Escaping to the room, Tal and Athlan hurry to pack their things. They need to leave. <laughs> Tal takes a moment to look at the coin the cat shifter tossed him and realises it is stamped from Assetia. Before Tal and Athlan can escape through the window, though, the pirates charge into the room. Damn it. Tal makes a stand, summoning fire and grabs a sword. He is able to take out two of the pirates and the third stops in her tracks, seeing the magic on display, and makes a run for it. 
She just nopes right the hell out of there. She does. Nope. That's a smart nope. pirate <laughs> right there. <laughs> Not going to do it. Nope. Ta- Tal and Athlan make their escape, but are met by more pirates outside. They banter, they curse, they fight, and magic is thrown. Then Athlan takes a dagger and stabs it into the captain's heart. At this, the other pirates run off, giving Tal and Athlan the opportunity to escape. For realsies this time. <laughs> realsies. Run. Eventually, they reach the castle, and Tal demands to be allowed in with an urgent message for the queen. It takes a little persuasion for the guards to believe he is actually Prince Tal demanding entrance into his own home, but they ring the warning bell at his command. Tal uses his magic to make a very dramatic entrance into the throne room where Issa, her husband Emmerich, Garrett, and their guards are. They're so relieved he's still alive! Yay! Yay! But Tal's more concerned over Kest, who they assure is in his room with guards. He's also concerned by Emmerich, who is stunned at his magic. Tal accuses him of knowing what his sister Vanessa has been plotting. Because, twist! It was his sister the whole time. (gasps) Evil bitch. He's he's too pretty and stupid to have had anything to do with it. (laughs) Yeah, he's He's so ornamental. (laughs) He's decorative. He's decorative. <laughs> Tal tells Issa and Garrett everything he's found out, but Emmerich calls them lies and says his sister would never do that. Vanessa enters the throne room at that exact moment with her maid and states her brother is too dim-witted to conspire to anything and confirms that all the accusations about her are true. <laughs> Vanessa is confident she can blackmail Tal and the Hearth royal family since she's sure they wouldn't want the rumors of Tal's magic to be confirmed. Meanwhile, the maid shifts into a cat and lunges, causing a fight to break out as the queen walks in with Cory, Tal's youngest sister. Before the maid and Vanessa can escape, they are caught and taken into custody, along with Emmerich. Oh, poor Aww. sweet Emmerich. Tal reunites with his mother and introduces Athlan to everyone. The queen leaves to stop a war and his siblings crowd in. It's just a normal war day in the royals, isn't it? Tal insists on seeing Kest, who is thankfully in bed and not assassinated. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. We all expected him not to be there. But... He is hurt from an archer shooting at him when he was a bird. Kest returns Tal's signet ring that was sent to the castle without ransom. Later in his rooms, Tal finds Athlan fast asleep in his bath. No. Tail Aww. hanging over the brim. No. It's a dorps. It's precious. The precious, precious California roll. Precious California roll. The precious California roll. <laughs> Sometime the next day, strange noises wake Tal and he pulls his magic for protection. But it's just Garrett and Corey. They tell him there has to be a meeting and that Tal and Athlan's presence is required, but not until after they eat. Let's get the important things. We need food. Yes. Yes. The Queen's council room is filled with the royal family and Tal recounts the events of his kidnapping, his rescue, the days spent in the cave, and the journey home. His family is very proud of him, but they wonder about how Athlan saved Tal from the middle of the sea when everyone else thought he was dead. Athlan tells them the truth about his rescue and shows them all his true form. Tal realizes his mother knew all about Merfolk as she stares at the tapestry covered with all sorts of magical folk. She reveals that her grandfather, Tal's great-grandfather, King Lon, attacked all the magical creatures, either killing them or driving them away, including the merfolk. It seems that all the myths they read as children were true. Now they all wonder why Athlan has legs, so he admits he made a bargain with the sea witch for them, but he doesn't say what the bargain is. Come on, guy, you gotta tell us. The discussion then turns to Emmerich and Vanessa. Issa doesn't believe her new husband was involved and doesn't want to annul their marriage. 
She decides the situation will be better handled if they keep their vows. However, the king of Ossetia needs to formally apologize for his siblings. They also agree that Tal can no longer hide his magic, so he will show the other kingdoms he is not his great-grandfather and will not use his magic for evil. Isa says they will have a celebration of joy, which will bring the other kingdoms to them, and Tal can show them all his true nature. The discussion takes one more turn as the queen asks for Cory and Athlan to step out. She tells her older children that the king of Mistin has a 17-year-old bastard daughter he wants to make legitimate, and that he may forgive the war if she were to marry into the hearth royal family. Tal believes, since he's the closest in age, that he will have to marry the girl. But Gareth won't let him because he sees the way Tal and Athlan look at each other. Kest steps up next, but Gareth also refuses to let him do it, knowing that he and she have feelings for each other. So he volunteers. He's 23, not an old man. Come on. (laughs) Besides, he says, it's time to settle down. The Queen agrees with all of this. Later, Garrett and Tal go to question Vanessa's maid, the cat shifter, in the dungeon. On the way, Tal hears a familiar voice. It's Poppy, the woman who helped keep him alive on the pirate ship. And she's very pleased she didn't kill him, and he agrees. <laughs> Poppy asks if the merfolk or the sea witch saved him, which is shocking because not many people know of their existence. Tal pushes her for more information, and Poppy says that the sea witch was a mage driven into the sea by fire. His great-grandfather's fire, to be exact. Mm. She begs Tal to free her, but Garrett comes back and drags Tal out of the dungeon. Great-grandfather. Evil. Come on, guy. So evil. Tal is disappointed Athlan isn't waiting for him in his room. He wants to share the news that his mother approves of their relationship and wants to make sure Athlan is comfortable at the palace, should he choose to stay. When Athlan does return, it's when Tal is fast asleep, and he wants to know if Tal is going to marry the princess. When Tal says he's not going to marry her, Athlan's relief is visible. Then Tal notices Athlan is fully dressed with shoes and waistcoat and a collar. And there's not a single hole in any of his clothes at all. Mm-hmm. Tal confesses that he wants to be with Athlan and shows him a hidden garden with a seawater pool and offers it to him if he wants to stay. Oh, oh. And you know what? He does want to stay. Oh. They kiss passionately and return to Tal's room. Oh. Ooh. They go black. During the early morning, Athlan can feel the pain of the sea witch calling in her debt. Terrible timing. Mm. Terrible. Terrible timing. He finally confesses to Tal that the blood of his beloved was the price for his legs. But he made that deal because he never thought he would find someone to be his beloved. (sighs) As his love for Tal grew, so did the pain in his legs. Tal says he will pay whatever price a sea witch asks to take away Athlan's pain. But Athlan won't allow it. A messenger interrupts them then, bringing word from the king of Assetia, and tells Tal his presence is needed. All these people's timing are really bad. It's really oh, bad. Sucks. Really bad timing. There is a formal gathering as Vanessa is escorted out to be sent home to her very displeased brother, and the crowd boo and toss rotten fruit at the disgraced princess. Vanessa spits hatred toward Tal and bemoans not killing him herself especially after his family had her maid killed. But she can rectify that and kill a sister, perhaps. Talden spots an archer taking aim at Corey and sends a burst of fire at the arrow, but he only singes it. It wasn't Corey who was hit, but Athlan, who pushed Corey out of the way. Oh, 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 oh,
be so good. Tal orders Garrett to take Athlan to the sea before running to the dungeon for Poppy. Tal demands to know the sea witch's name so he can summon her and freeze Poppy for it. Her name is Morwen. <gasps> At the sea, Garrett has brought Athlan and helps Tal carry him into the surf. Tal begs the sea for Morwen. The sea witch's magic is palatable as she appears. Tal wants to save Athlan and offers her his blood, but now she requires a life for a life. <gasps> Poppy screams from the beach and runs into the sea. She will gladly give her life and pledges herself to Morwen. Tal slashes his arm with the shark tooth, throws some of his blood in too, just in case. The bargain is struck, and the sea witch produces a shell for him to fill with his blood as Poppy walks into a wall of water and emerges as a spirit of the sea. Athlan's life is saved. Hooray! <laughs> Tal wakes later, surrounded by his siblings, having nearly drowned after making the deal with the sea witch, and they tease him mercilessly. <laughs> Athlan is sitting in his myrrh form, with Cory a short distance away. Tal goes to Athlan and confesses he may have damned his descendants by giving his blood to the sea witch, but he doesn't regret it. They then roll around the beach, kissing. Oh. Months pass. No, oh, just them kissing on the beach. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, it that is true. That's what happened the entire just, time. Just constantly roll, California just, roll, just rolling back rolling. and forth, getting all sandy. Uh -huh. It's still delicious. Yes, but let's interrupt that with a wedding. <laughs> oh. <gasps> The arranged marriage between Garrett and the illegitimate Mr. Daughter was rejected, and she eloped with her handmaiden and her fencing instructor. Mm. This is Kest and Shea's wedding. No! I'm so excited. Before their ceremony begins, Tal will announce himself to the officials and attendants, no longer hiding who and what he is. Everyone is curious about the last great mage who bargained with the sea witch and lived, and who was betrothed to the last merman. Now, though, he's surrounded by Athlan, Kest, Shea, Issa, Emric, Garrett, and Corey. They banter and jibe as only loving family can before the queen enters and orders everyone out so they can begin the celebrations. Oh! Oh, yeah. So precious. Happy ever after. The end. Mm. Right, we're going to go and dance at a wedding while everybody we else are. listens to messages from another podcast. Toast the bride and groom. We will toast the bride and groom. Have a cinnamon roll and a California roll. And a California roll. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Volley, one of the hosts of the Reading Queens podcast. If you love books, fandom discussions, and having a good time, join your new internet friends as we take on such topics and more. Hosted by a group of published authors, Reading Queens is a podcast for every book lover. Every week, we get together to blab about our favorite books, why we love them, and the book boyfriends we wish were real. You can find the episodes on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and other platforms, with a new episode launching every Wednesday. Thanks. Now back to the show. Right, is everybody full of cinnamon rolls and California rolls and toasted their champagne? God, I really wish I was. I've had champagne and I'm a little tipsy. No, not really. <laughs> no, I've had rum because I'm a pirate. Yeah, I do have a little taste of rum in my <laughs> in my lap. And in you my... too can get a fictional hangover mug if you go to Redbubble. Thank you very much. Fictional <laughs> hangover dot redbubble dot com. For all your this favorite the fictional March hangover March. themed merchandise. <laughs> oh, Second little bit of advertising time. there. It's fine. I love it when it's impromptu. It's fine. <laughs> Which is 99% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> anywho, anywho, anywho. Mm -hmm. I think, Annie, do you want to start the ball rolling? I think would we this, should have Annie start. Would this. The standout moments? Yes. Um, 
I was expecting like the typical, I'm a prince, you're the captain of the pirate ship. I mean, that's looking at that picture on there. Um, so the minute that Athlan says, there, I found them and they're shiny, I went, oh, man. <laughs> I found it on the bottom of the sea and it's shiny and it's mine. I'm like, Merman. Um, and so that was such a pleasant surprise because I do love me a merman uh, story. Um, and then when I was listening, because uh, I got the audiobook too, and I was listening in the grocery store as I'm doing my, my shopping. And when the big reveal came, I stopped in the middle of the snack aisle at Reese's and went, yes, merman. And, and then I immediately texted Claire because I didn't know if Amanda had finished reading and I didn't want to spoil. So I, I'm like, I'm literally standing in the middle of the snack aisle messaging Claire. I knew he was a merman. <laughs> I so that literally was, that howled was... when I got that message through. I was like, yes, yes. 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 So if if there was a crazy woman in your research and talking about merman, mermans, um, yeah, that was me. And sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry not sorry. sorry. Yeah. So I yeah, I was totally not expecting that. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I do want to talk about the audiobook. I. Uh, also want to talk about the audiobook. Do we all have the same issue with the audiobook? I kind of hated like, it. I was like fine with it. I was floating along and listening along and we're in this like magical magical kingdom and then Prince Emmerich starts talking and I'm like, what the hell? Did we go to Texas all of a sudden? Yeah. What <laughs> was What was the deal with that? It was so out of place. It was so out of place. I was like, is he from Texas? <laughs> He's from the kingdom of Texas. I He's had to check to kingdom. see if my AirPods hadn't picked up my husband's audiobook when it <laughs> happened. Because sometimes it does. The Bluetooth connection gets a bit wily. And I, th I honestly thought I picked up his book. But no, no, no. No, they're from Texas. They're from Texas. Yeah, so apparently Emmerich's brother is the ruler of Texas. So, yeah. But it's just it, it it's just sense. Emmerich who has the accent though yeah, because just, Vanessa yeah, was Vanessa was fine. Um I he had was, he, Yeah. I had he some was, other <laughs> issues with the audio though too. It wasn't just Emmerich. It wasn't just honky tonk Emmerich. <laughs> honky tonk. <laughs> Oh. I'm the prince of honky tonk. I'm the prince of honky tonk. Yeah. I just yeah. might be the princess of the of half. It was there were there were a few times when Athlin sounded so stupid, like, but I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> like why would you just get dumb all of a sudden? What happened? Because there are other times when he has like a this vast vocabulary, but then he's like, "Oh, but I don't, I don't know what to do. Oh, 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 I'm just a merman." Like, what happened? And also, the queen sounded like a king. <laughs> so I was not impressed with the audiobook well as often is the case when i have both a, a print copy or a kindle copy and the audiobook i will um get to a point in the audiobook where i just want to know what happens and so then i like put it down and i finish reading and then i go so i went back and finished listening and then and i once again emmerich came back on and it was like oh we're back to texas okay <laughs> So um yeah, the not, had a different not... accent as well. She had like a like a Middle Eastern accent. Yeah. But considering she's supposed to be, you know, an Ascetia aristocrat. Yeah. It just or descendant of it was a bit weird. It 
it was a it it, it was it was not a, a favorite audiobook by no. any means it was like a, it was good you know nice because you could continue listening in the story whilst shopping for groceries but um yeah not a great audiobook no um choices would definitely be i i want to know this is not a standout moment but i um didn't ever catch maybe i just missed it or maybe it wasn't told what was the cost of Tao giving his blood to the sea witch? I mean, was it ever said? Is it or was mm-hmm. it just? Uh, oh, this is just a bad idea. It's a bad idea, and it's yeah. likely going to result in his descendants having to pay that price. I hope uh, that his descendants have tentacles. <laughs> Fierce tentacles, Hell. or like it will. Um, like tentacles I mean you know maybe they can they're gonna take after their second father and you know be half person half the octopus or something which leads me to another question when Athlan shows the queen his hand and it's like his he's like I'm showing you my true form there was no water I mean I thought the mar- if you're a mar person, you got to have some water to like transform. So mm. maybe he doesn't need really it. Never said in this one though. It's not splash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and so it's like, oh, here's here's my my webbed fingers, and like, Do and she just immediately though, knows. You make the assumption that they need water because the the tail. It's easier yeah. to transform in the water when you're going to produce a tail. And also, it's easier to produce a tail when you have to take off your pants and your dick comes out. To be in the water, it's less <laughs> embarrassing. You don't I really want to be showing your future mother-in-law your penis. No, you no, don't. You don't. No, that's not a good. That's not a good way to start it off. No, I did love when um, he got out of the uh, he came came ashore i think in the, it was in the cave and dara was there when he and when he came like, oh. when he came ashore 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 <laughs> i'm so glad you were picking up on those puns as well <laughs> she's like pants and he's like oh land land rules okay <laughs> oh i can't just walk around with my dick out you can't just walk around with my dick out why can't <laughs> i walk around with my penis out that's what i do because you I'm a your modest man. <laughs> I I also you know the another story that I want her to write. I want to read the story of the illegitimate daughter who run who elopes with her handmaiden and the fencing instructor. Yes, yes. I, I want, want that. I one. want to read that story. Yeah, I need that. <laughs> I need that like, story. Throw it in there. She just she, and her fencing instructor. And I also want to know um, the lyrics to the sea shanty song about foam. <laughs> yeah. We need to know that. that. I want two other stories. I want the story of his descendants. And yeah, his tentacled descendants. Repercuss- yes, his tentacled descendants and the repercussions of the sea witch. Um, and at that point, I kind of want Poppy to be the sea witch. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, and the other story is, I want to know about King Lorne. I want, I and I think Jay Kristoff. I want Jay Kristoff style horror, decimation, brutality. Yeah. All the fucks, shits, cuds, bastards, and bitches yes. thrown in there. Yes. I want a graphically detailed horror story of King Lorne massacring. Yes all these magical folk and trying to take over the world. I think it'll be quite an interesting one. That would be more my style, I think. Yeah. This one dark. This one was precious and lovely. But everyone knows I need I need you, some, yeah, you, I need some you, gore. You, you need to you need to go a wee bit darker. Yeah. Yeah. A wee bit darker. Wee bit darker. It yeah. was definitely a Sunday afternoon light raid. Like you know, you just want to fill in a few hours, quick read. Yeah. 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 I enjoyed it. it. I was... really did. I enjoyed the fact that, like, there was the integration of the LGBTQ community into the world. 
And you know when when Tal meets Athlan and Garrett's like, Oh, there was a boy who was there. There was a boy. And you know this, and it, that's an assumption that everybody will go with whomever they want. And yeah. it's fine. And I love that. That's one of yeah, my but... favorite final thought quotes, actually. Yeah, the that the bit. whole um just acceptance and it's just it is what it is and nobody questions it that's nice that's nice to see Mm -hmm. um as you all know i'm a wee bit older than you all and i you know i don't know when young adult became a thing but but back in my day the only like young adult books featured what blonde white girls who go to college to find a husband that was, you know, there was no, there was nothing. So I am always charmed by a book like this. That is just like, Oh, yes. You love who you love. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's precious. Uh, it's, I'm always happy to see that in a book. And also yeah. you just run off and have a happy polyamorous marriage because there's, you know, nothing wrong with that. Instructor. Yeah, it's just a you do you, and as long as you're not hurting anybody, consent right? and don't hurt anybody. That's, that's fine. our and, like that's that's our life motto. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's amazing. It's lovely. I also like the fact that there was so many women in power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it was very very female dominated, but also that the bad guy. Was a bad girl. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I like that. that. Zeph, equal it was op- Captain Zeph. E- and- equal opportunity for women. You yes. can be, you can be the evil, but evil bad guy, bad girl. Equal so opportunity villainry. Yes, it was yes. wonderful. I adored that because girls can be baddies too. Yes, <laughs> and I honestly, and I think that this is. This is like bringing in some current events. I think it's it was it was interesting to see that that there are all you know it's like the queen and then the daughter is going to rule because as as we know Queen Elizabeth has just passed away mm-hmm. and they put that up there on the TV screen of this is what the succession line looks like and it's all men and it's going to be all men until I die or you know it's there, there's never going to be another queen in my lifetime so regardless about how you feel about the monarchy but just the passage of that that it, it's nice to see that it doesn't automatically go to the guys yeah, yeah. I mean to be to, in defense of the monarchy in my country which this is a rare occurrence me defending the monarchy <laughs> in my country um the line of succession is the firstborn and you can't control gender well, you probably yeah. can but you can't control gender and it just so happens to be boys that were born first um, well yeah and it, it was the same in the case of in half you know that it was the queen was the queen and Issa was the first born she was the heir but also the most suited for the role as is well. that right i thought garrett was the oldest no garrett was the second okay he was okay. yeah and then cast yeah. then Talon and Corey so yeah it was it, it was but it was just nice to have that in there um, yeah and like and, Shay is like a badass she's and, like a commander of the army or something yeah, isn't she yeah yeah and she's just like kicking she's kicking ass and taking names um and nobody thinks anything of it she's not like eh, it's not like oh you're a girl you're a weak that's another thing that I I referencing how young adult has changed since now versus what I grew up with there were never any girls doing any anything Mm -hmm. they were you know they their main goal was to either um a career that was very female or oriented you know like a teacher or a nurse there was Mm -hmm. never anybody wanting to there were never any girls fighting fighting sea witches or dragons yeah. or demons or any of that, and so I I like I like to see see that it, it, to to see a, a a empowered like yeah I'm as good as you and I will just kick your ass if you just fuck with me. Mm-hmm. I also appreciated the fact that Kest 
was allowed to marry Shay. Like, there were no, yes. oh, but you have to marry someone from a royal family. Yes. And they were all, and, and the scene where they found out about this bastard daughter, and they're like, okay, well, you know, oh, Tal's like, it's going to be me because I'm the same age, so it just makes sense. And then Garrett's like, no, no, no. And then Cast is like, no, no, no. I'll do it because you're happy right now. And then Garrett's like, no, no, you're both happy. I am not interested in anyone, so I'll just get married because why not? And he, I, I, I really, I really appreciated that. That was good. Yeah. The whole like, because yeah. then it wasn't the same old uh, royalty normal person trope you've seen 50 mm-hmm. billion times yeah. yes there was no marriage of convenience because even the queen was like i i do not ever want to ask you of this but i have to ask this time and she, she didn't want to do it she didn't want to be in that position and it, 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 you can tell it killed her to ask this of her children but it's not just kest marrying shay like tal married athlan and yes athlan is a merman but he's also not a royal. Yeah, he's nobody. So yeah. the, the fact that the queen, that the, the entire royal family are happy for for who, their line to marry into whichever family they want, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be an aristocrat. It can be anybody. Mm-hmm. And that's delightful. Like, even Shay, which we know Mary, she marries Kest in the end, but they say very early on that Shay was a childhood friend so she has the same rights to take the mickey out of tal as what garrett and kest does mm-hmm. because they grew up together and it's that lack of pompousness and that i really quite enjoyed because it's it's very prevalent within you know so many books but also within society I, and i hate that it's like it, this this the definitions of class it's awful but again tying into what you were saying about you know garrett volunteering at last a YA book with a family that care about each other yes every single oh one of them it's amazing God. love and support like it didn't come in the same way but kest is also by the reading of it he suffers from a lot of depression yeah yeah um and a lot of you know other mental health um illnesses which is one of the reasons why he's taken to the his bed it's not just because of the wound from the archery from the archer it's because he feels complete guilt over tal's quote-unquote death Mm -hmm. so it's the inclusion of the fact that there are mental health illnesses in the world and that they are trying to help their brother through this that's yeah. why Tal was so desperate to go and see Kest to say, I'm alive, I'm here, it's okay, do not feel guilty, let's hug it out. And I just, I, yeah. I loved it. I loved every scene where they're taking the piss out of each other. That and was fun. It was so fun. I love uh, awesome. when, the, when the queen comes in the room and she's like, are all my children here? And Corey says, yep, even the extra ones. <laughs> and, you know, it's just that once they accept somebody as their sibling's partner, they're like, yep, they're family. Come on. Yeah. There's none of that. No, we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was nice to see a, a happy, happy family. Yeah. So who was everyone's favorite character? Well, as you know, I, I, I do love me a merman. Um, I love merman stories. Um, get me talking about Gail Carriger's um, San Andreas shifters, and I will just fangirl all about Marvin the Merman because he's just awesome. Um, so yeah, he, I love I love the mer- the Merman, but we're gonna not go with like the main character. We're gonna go with Shay. So uh, much as I love As As ugh, can't talk Ashlyn. Um, I like Shay. I like I liked her attitude. I like how she, she was she, scary lady. She, mm-hmm. she gave no fucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's just like, yep. Yeah. What about you, Claire? 
I, I mean, I, I, I agree with Annie. But I loved Garrett. I, I just liked his attitude. Like, I want to go out on a bender with him. <laughs> <laughs> it would be fun to go with a bender on. But I also like Dara for not taking, like, you know, not t- 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 cowing to Tal and be like, no, you need to earn my respect. Yeah. Not just automatically giving it because of an accident of birth. Um. So I really like, and the fact that one of my favourite scenes was Dara turning around going, I am not going to go and see that scary lady and I am certainly not telling the scary lady that she's in love with the second prince of Hearth. No. No. They were like, yeah. no, she's 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 going to straight up murder me when I say that I know her secret crush. So, uh, uh-uh, uh, not going to do it. No, Dara's got a head screwed on, and I respect that. Yeah. What about you? I really liked Kest. Yes, sweet, sweet Kest. Yes, I love that he, you know, just swoops in to save the day. Literally swoops Literally. in as a bird. Literally in. Uh, yeah, I I really appreciated that. I liked that. Well, he's also magic, and it's not the same magic. But he's like, yeah, I'm a bird. Shrug. Yeah, I'm a bird. Shrug. Um, I but I also appreciated what we were talking about a little bit ago with him suffering from depression, and they were just like, okay, well, you know. He's having a time right now where he's just going to walk around the house wrapped up in a little blanket. And that's just how he is right now. And they're just like, okay, it's fine. We'll take care of him. And then he's a bird again. And then he comes in to save the day. I just, I don't know. I really liked Kest. Well, if Tal is a cinnamon roll and if Athlon is California roll, what's Kest? Because he's precious and must be safe at all costs. Mm. Does he also have to be some sort of role? It feels like it, but it doesn't have to be. And seeing chicken wings feels a little like, that you know, that feels a little derogatory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that little, little. I don't know of a any... hush puppy. Oh, a little hush puppy. That's precious. What's a hush puppy? It's a tiny little bite of cornbread. That you oh. have with your fish sticks. <laughs> well, yeah, if he's a hush puppy, then she has got to be something that goes with it. Yeah, I can't. I, I, can't, I can't think of anything that's yeah. like chicken. Chicken really. It doesn't have to be chicken, Amanda. Stop it. I can't think of anything that's bird. <laughs> well, that's bird if, related. If, this, if he's a hush puppy, and that's like new orleansy so oh no he can be like a beignet or a cala or mm, yeah and then and then um she has a bit of coffee shay, to go with is, this. shay is like the 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 um cafe de monde um uh cafe au lait yeah she's like strong but kind of sweet sometimes <gasps> mm. Is Kest I, a I sharp cheddar and going... share the bitter coffee? No, because those don't go together. Do you do? Bitter, bitter do coffee try what? It. It's fucking delicious. I am not going to eat cheese coffee. You don't have to put it in your mouth at the same time. You just Gross. have to kind of like share the palate. Mm-mm. Not. Have you had that that cheese that that it's it it tastes like peanut butter and it's goji go 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 something and the husband loves it and he's like oh it's the peanut butter cheese and i'm like no those two things do not ever go together i do not like peanut butter do you well you're wrong do you know you're wrong what do you know what just recently came out here in arkansas cheese ice cream Ew. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to eat that. I think it's like cheese dip, cheese dip ice cream, and the cone might be like a tortilla chip, and I am not into that. Ooh, nasty. No, mm-mm. no, I don't. I don't want. Well, normally, mm-mm. normally, I would say I am not biased towards any cheese, but in this instance, I'm feeling biased towards this cheese. You're not. You're not going <laughs> to enjoy this cheese. I don't feel like I will because I'm getting like a 
be uh, completely out of nowhere feeling that it's like a strong blue cheese which frozen is disgusting um and and the peanut butter cheese that i can't remember its name it is also brown no cheese should it's not like a be tan brown color. no it's tan. Or, no it's, yeah no right so we're establishing the cast and share are not a cheese unless no. it's, one of them is peanut butter and the other one's jam they're they're just oh, one's peanut... a marshmallow and the other one is chocolate dip. Yeah, that's that's fine. All of those things are fine. Those will work. Those will work. I'm I'm googling peanut butter cheese by the way. Mm, no, I don't. I think we should just skip over that. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll send you a picture of it or mm. the link. I'll sh- and I will share these this cheese ice cream picture of it or whatever. I, you know it's one of those things where that when you've mispronounced the name for so long and it's an inside joke that you don't remember the real name anymore yeah. so it's the peanut butter cheese and i think it's i think it's sweet it's yeah it's yeah it's not your normal cheese Let's not... this is also a problem because for years we have said vaginas and guatemala <laughs> So sometimes you go into a Mexican restaurant and you go, oh, the vaginas and the Guatemala, and then you sound like Kubrick. So no, you know. no, no one <laughs> needs to sound like that. No. Imagine I'm looking at pictures of this cheese ice cream dip in. It's lobolly, lobolly. Yeah, they have good ice cream, but not. I don't. I don't want to have this. Please, please never. Um, no, so no. other th- other than the cheese ice cream, w- are there any other surprises that anyone yes. encountered? Yes. I am going to say my surprise because I'm going to reference what you said at the beginning or at least link back to what you said at the beginning mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where you're like, I can't, ex- I can't remember the exact words. But just like what you expected from the story, I was expecting some gay boy pirates. Yes. From the front cover, I was expecting a couple of young lovers meet at sea. There might be a kidnapping. It's pirates. Whatever. I was expecting one of them to be a pirate. No. Nobody was pirates. No. Well, that, I mean, there were pirates, there were pirates. Which is shocking. But, yes. Yeah. The whole story was a surprise for me and bear in mind i have had this book in my e-library for over a year (laughs) i have looked at the back of the summary recommended several times I have... You literally, that is the phrase you messaged me. Annie, would you like to talk gay boy pirates in September with us? That was <laughs> it's literally... not gay boy pirates. No. It's freaking magic and mermen and sea witches. <laughs> it's a fantasy story with assassinations and political intrigue. What yeah. the what? Yeah. I was totally, like, I literally finished listening to it. I did a, a one day listen through because I was in the office again. And I was like, what? And I knew I was the first one out of the three of us to have listened to it. Yeah, I, I, I was. was so I was the last desperate. one. Yeah, I was so desperate to say, "What the hell have I just listened to?" But not in a bad way, because I actually enjoyed it more for it. Because it felt like it was less of a romance and more of a getting from point A to point B to try and stop a war. Yeah, and I appreciated it more for that. But yeah, freaking. Mermen, magic, and sea witches. It was Ariel the Little Mermaid with two boys. Yeah. I was and amazing. I read that somewhere that it was a, a retelling of the Little Mermaid, but I've never actually read the Little Mermaid, so I don't know, you know. But yeah, I was very much surprised when, um, yeah, we had a merman, and it, which, you know, I, like I say, I love a merman, so, but it, it was not what I was expecting. I do have to say that given their age and this, I appreciated that the, the, the scene where he says, um, you promised to show me what a be- a royal bed feels like. He's like, I didn't mean it like that. Um, I appreciated that that faded to black, which, you know, happily read some some sexy times 
But I thought in this case, it was very, it, it worked well in the story. It was very appropriate because it was such a sweet story. Mm -hmm. We didn't need to like. Yeah, I was actually, I was almost worried about that. I yeah. thought, oh, I mean, fine that it's happening. Lovely, wonderful. But I was worried that it was about to get a lot saucier than it had been the entire rest of the book. I kind of was afraid that it wasn't going to fade to black and I was going to be like, whoa. No. It so, seems really but, inappropriate yeah. to, to read those scenes as an adult reading YA. Like, as an adult reading adult sexy scenes, fine, bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah, bring it on, I yeah. have it with toast and a cup of tea. But for YA, I don't want to read sexy scenes. Yeah, Which is why I mean, Ever After was bloody awful as well. Plus, it was just a bad book. No, After. Not Ever After. After. Oh, yeah, After. Did, was oh. one of the other ones called After? I don't know. I look at the series and just want to vomit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, Foley. But yeah, I did appreciate it was a, a fade to black story. I thought given the, the, um, the age of the characters... That it was YA, it was, it was, it was, I liked it. I, mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. it, it was good that way. Yeah. But, um, which also I read a Goodreads review where, and we've talked about this in our group chat about somebody, uh, this was a book that somebody said, it's just so YA. And that, that kind of review just irks me Yeah. that it's just so YA because it's YA yeah that's not that's not a thing like you you can say that's, it's too juvenile for you but it, it can't be too young adult because that's literally what it is yeah yeah so but yeah yeah weird what were your surprises I was also surprised when you were like, hey, Amanda, you're going to like this so much more than you thought you were going to because, you know, magic. Um, but I was really upset that it was not revealed that Corey had any sort of ability because there was one moment and I can't. I can't exactly remember what it was, but it just felt like there was some foreshadowing that she could, like, see. Not necessarily the future, but she had some sort of extra sight. And I mm -hmm. thought she was going to get some some sort of something. Yeah. But she didn't. Uh, yeah, she, yeah, she, she you, you, you felt like there was, there was more to her story. I did, I did. So, you know, maybe there will be more of Corey in the future. There's a lot of loose ends. Like, uh, not lo necessarily loose ends, but lo lots of places. Dangling that tentacles. That the story can go to. Yeah, lots of dan dangling, dangling tentacles. Dangling yes. tentacles. Um, is it, it is it time? It is time. It is time. It is time. Arr, is it time? Yo-ho! Yo-ho! I have oh, not done enough pirate speech. I once lost haven't. my voice on International Talk Like a Pirate Day because I literally talk like a pirate all day at work for eight hours solid. I pissed off so many people. Well, so you know, it's it's coming up. So you, you've it's got It's coming time. up. It's, yeah. You're, it's coming up. What um, of the week is it? Because that will I think it's a Monday. Monday. Because it is my wedding anniversary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is perfect. That is perfect, it is. Annie. Um, we we have been married longer than talk like a pirate day has been a thing, but we you know we sell you know we got to celebrate both the things. So, right. Um, yeah. All righty. All right. It be you. Would you rather die? <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going to continue that because you want people to listen. <laughs> Fun fact: You can um, the uh, you Amanda probably knows this because she's a librarian. Um, the Mango app that you get to learn languages uh, from your library does have a pirate. It does lesson. It does. It does. Yes. Yeah. You can. It has. You can learn to speak pirate. 
I you could you could change Facebook over to pirate as well at one point. <laughs> Isn't so funny? Yeah, that was a long time ago. I don't know if you can still do that. I don't know, but I only had it on for about a week before I was like, I can't understand a word that's on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good anyway. Point. Anywho, would you rather? Anywho. Anywho. Cannon fire, cannon fire, cannon fire. We asked on social media, would you rather be a pirate or a person? On Facebook, 71% said person. On Instagram, 54% said pirate. On Twitter, it was straight up 50-50. And on TikTok, it was 69% said pirate. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, right. Mr. Bond. We have comments, lots of comments. Vince on Facebook said, I've gone pirate, but only as long as it's the romanticised version of pirates rather than the actual historical ones. I'd rather not have scurvy. No, yeah, let's not. Fair. Let's not have scurvy. Um, and I like to bathe, so, you know, if you're really going to be a pirate, you're going to have to give up ba- bathing mm, and dental yeah. hygiene. And yeah. Anything. I think a lot of them could swim even. Bad luck. Yeah. Um, Coral on Facebook chooses m- mer person that wishes to be a pirate, and I think it's funny that she went mer person first because we had some other comments, like in some library comments, that are like a like a pirate that is also a mer person, but Coral chooses mer person first. I like it. I like it. Colin on Facebook said, I believe the correct answer is pirate. Having a crew around you, being able to wear a peg leg with no danger of judgment for anyone else. Permission to shout yo-ho at the top of your voice at every available opportunity. I'm pretty sure these things are the best things in life. Constance on Facebook. Son of a bitch. She's just fully regressed. All of her responses are are in song form again. It's degenerated. Yeah. It's terrible. I don't even know what that is. I thought it was she was just being kind of salacious. I is that a song? It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a song. A little mermaid. It's a little mermaid song. Oh, yeah. oh yes. They, okay. Yeah. Sebastian yeah. the crab. Yeah. Okay. Life is better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. <laughs> What do they got? A lot of sad. We got a hot crustacean band. I'm glad that you went like big band just then. Like, oh yeah. Oh, 20s, baby. That's how I sing it. I know all of the words to that one. My son once only ever listened to that one song on repeat. That's fantastic. It's been a long time since I, I, I watched that movie, you know. Even though I don't have children, I still like to watch all the Disney movies for all the funny stuff they put in for the parents who had to go and watch. Yeah, I would argue Disney is not for children. Yeah. I would argue right now, but the the, the podcast has probably gone long enough. Bree on Facebook said, Supernatural creature with the voice to croon people to their dooms. Or scurvy? Gimme them gills. I like gimme them gills. Give me them gills. I like it. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me them gills. I like it. L20 Kev on Instagram. I'm so glad that Kevin is back. I'm so glad. I really missed all of Kevin's comments. And I will say, Kev, I have asked my steward family members and they are going to get back to me with an answer to last week's Would You Rather question. That's good. Ass or crotch. He really needed to know the answer to that question. <laughs> So his reply this time was really tough. Being a pirate looks cool, but there's lots of death, food supply issues, and you know pirates always seem hot, sweaty, and stinky. As a merman, there's tons of fish to eat, although technically you'd be eating your friends, and I think you wouldn't need to wear deodorant anymore. However... It must be a, a hell of a lot of fish pee you're drinking daily, which I'm not sure I'm okay with. So I'm going to say pirate. <laughs> that was an adventure. It was. That was an adventure over the high seas and then under the high seas and then back over the high it seas. It was. It was. Uh, that's, that's 
like that meme of um no i'm not gonna drink water fish fucking that so. <laughs> I, I assume it's okay to say fuck as many times as i want on the podcast oh yeah go you, for it. you've listened <laughs> To the, to <laughs> yes, the podcast yes. before, right? You, you did hear me drop the yeah. C bomb earlier, yeah? You did. <gasps> you did say cunt earlier, so it's fine. Just like you. So- I know, I know. Um, we had some good comments from the library as well. I was pleased with the answers this time. Um, someone wanted to be a pirate mer person and. <laughs> Oh, can I read one? Can I read this you one? Can, you can. You can. The rusty scurvy dogs. Tis a beautiful thing, the briny deep, unless ye must walk the plank. Yeah. Yeah. Someone else just said, I am a mer person. And then someone else doesn't, wants to be a pirate because they don't want to be in the water that much. And I think my favorite one is pirate they are my second favorite thing next to dinosaurs <laughs> and they go on cool adventures and there is treasure and i love them i love that answer as well it's really and good I- because it's all one sentence <laughs> so what's everyone else gonna choose I um, saw this question and immediately went with Coral on this. I am going to be a mer person who engages in piracy so I can have the best <laughs> of both worlds. Um, and because of that, I think I voted um, one on Facebook and one on Instagram. So I, I skewed your 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 your. Because, yeah, I'm going to be a mer person who engages in piracy. I really love your word choice. That you are a mer person who engages in piracy. Yes, I don't piracy. know why I love it so much, but I do. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do some pirating. Yeah. I love it. We're going to get our pirate wake up on. Wake up and go, hmm, let's engage in some piracy. Let's engage in some piracy like, today. Let's go do a crime. Let's go engage oh, in piracy. Do to and, do crimes an exception uh an amend 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 addition whatever that word amendment is. Uh, no, amendment to this i specifically want the bathtub in the san andreas shifters pack house in the master bathroom because they have put a tub in with a mermaid shaped tub tail tub so that Marvin can can get in the water and let his tail out. So uh, I'm gonna I want to I want to be a mer person who has a fancy tub, where we so we don't have to let our tail just hang over the edge. We wanna. But you also want to engage in piracy. <laughs> and once I get out of the tub, and you know I'm sufficiently relaxed, then I will go out and I will engage in some piracy <laughs> and see some, some sea shanties involving foam. I've just yeah, got this image of you sitting board with a at thing. breakfast. You know, you, you know, you're having some poached eggs on toast. You know, some smashed avocado, a nice cup of tea. And you just kind of take that sip, look out the window, and go, yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to engage in some piracy today. And just get up and go and do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do some piracy today. I feel a little pirate. You've got the hat. You've got it's the look. Perfect. Perfect. It's perfect. Head to toe, you are ready to I go. Got it's I got the boots. I got the boots. I love it. Why are you still here? Go and engage in some piracy. Go engage in in piracy. <laughs> you know, I I was going to choose my person, but I'm not I'm not anymore because I want to engage in piracy. So I'm going to be a pirate <laughs> just so I can engage in piracy. <laughs> I'm joining the crew. I'm engaging in some piracy as well. Let's do it. Um, yeah. I think we might need a fictional hangover t-shirt that says, <laughs> says Mer person who engages in piracy. I think you're right. I think you're right. I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a note. I'm gonna take a note right now. It's going on. The you're list. welcome. <laughs> God, this, this, 
so many images are going through my I head know. right now. I know. It's so good. All right. Um, okay. Uh, next question. Would you rather shift into a bird or a cat? We're not restricted into what kind of bird or cat are we? No. But I feel like if there's not a parrot involved what? engaging in piracy. I I want to Pirates be- are on the list of birds I do not like. Hmm. Oh. You don't have to be a I parrot. Wanna be, I don't want to be a cat simply for the attitude. Just the like Fuck them. <laughs> just, just fuck shit Demons. up. And then you just lay there smugly and and yeah. I'd be You a go and engage in your piracy, just you know, bring the scratches when you back when you come back. Yeah, I I I would probably also like to be a cat. If I were a bird, I would choose penguin because I like penguins. But I'm gonna go with cat. But I'm not gonna be a little piddly little house cat. I'm gonna be like a panther or something. Are you gonna be a panther man? I'm gonna be a panther man. Ooh. I'm going big cat. Are you? Are you? But you're gonna be a one that can uh, like actually do it. You're not gonna like half ass it like. No half assing. No, it's not going to be the hand of bear of panther. You're cat. moving to hot shot. Oh God, no! I'm going no. <laughs> no, you've already said it. Damn it! <laughs> it's canon. It is. Although, I mean, if you were gonna, if if I was going to be a bird, um, a puffin, because they're just like so adorable. Yeah, they're they're precious. Um, they're precious. I feel like I would. That is my. Name. I would like to be like a hawk or something, like a violent bird. Have you seen those really scary looking, like the ones that have got like the, the size of people, but the bills are just freaking huge. You look at them and think, how are you not a mythical creature? I can't remember what they're, they're called. I'm going to Google big, scary bird. <laughs> big, scary bird. Big, scary bird. Yes. Big, scary My bird. My favorite name for a bird is a blue foot of booby. Oh, there it is. It's the first one that comes up. A, a titmouse. I, you, know, tit- you know, I almost said that, and I was like, no, I don't I don't think that's right. It, but I almost there, yeah, said like, it. There, I, I knew this, but also because day before yesterday, I was at Barnes & Noble, and there was a mug that had, like, all the, 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 the bad suggestive not real bad all those sort of names on a on a on a mug um i would have purchased said mug but it was way too small like it was yeah it needed it wasn't hefty enough but yeah yeah okay, so the, the scary bird is a um it's a shoe bill it's a shoe Ooh. bill stalk also no, dubbed as death pelican oh i'm into that <laughs> I like a death pelican. A death pelican. It's freaking huge. So there you go. It's got like a hook at the at the end of its beak. So let's Google just that. get right in the name there. What we're what we're all about. We are a death pelican. Death pelican. Yeah. It's yeah. Freaking huge. Yeah. Anywho. Yeah. So are we all officially answering cat of some variety? Apparently. But we also have our birds yeah. picked out just in case. Right. Just in case. Yeah. You know. Case. Okay. Kind of. It's good to okay. be prepared. Yes. yes. <laughs> Next, would you rather? Annie, you asking this one? Oh, would you rather have a coming of age tour or just go on a bender with Garrett? <laughs> Garrett seems like he would be a fun person to go on a pub crawl with. I mean, he would know all the spots. He would get you free booze. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's, and the the coming of age tour sounded really fun, except it didn't really go that well. So last a day. Yeah, it lasted a day. <laughs> so um, if it was a good tour, yeah, I would be all about that. But since in this in this instance in this book, the tour lasted a day, and then you were. Um, enslaved and and kidnapped and 
tortured and held in chains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the yeah torture. Yeah, all that. No, I'm, yeah. Let's just go on a bender with Garrett. Yeah. Besides, I think he's probably. You know, I, I think he was described as. You know, he was he was rocking that that um, captainy of the boat look. So yeah, we could we could go on a bender. He'd be fun and pretty to look at too. But he can't get out the rose garden. Um, he can't get out the rose garden. No, that uh, is Emmerich. Yeah, but the bless Garrett. him and his stupidity. Emmerich can't. Garrett can get out the rose garden. He should. He's the head of the navy. He needs to be able to do that. And it was a rose garden that was bare. Of, it, it was like a in the winter, so there's like no leaves. It wasn't like a rose garden when they were in bloom. It was... <sighs> It's like that rose garden they saw last last year, where it was literally one rose bush in a pot. Yeah, that's not that's <laughs> one not rose bush in a pot does not a garden make. Anywho, coming of age tour or going to bender? Does the coming of age tour need to be on a boat? Suppose mm. if it's appropriate to the story, it kind of does. Because fun fact, I get seasick. You're just gonna be barfing the whole time. Well, it depends on the boat, to be honest. If I'm on a ferry, I've been fine. But when I went on an actual cruise ship for an actual week of cruising, I was, like, sitting on deck all the time looking at the horizon because I felt sick if I went any if I was anywhere else where there was no fresh air. However, I have been on a long um, a, a tall boat as well in the Aegean Sea. And that was hella fun. And I did not get seasick there once. Best meatballs of my life on that ship. Um, I think it has something to do with the cruise ship thing because personally, I think that just sounds like hell on earth, a vacation on a cruise ship with four thousand people and you can't get away from them it until wasn't a very we... big cruise ship. Okay, well, yeah, because I'm like no, and then you get off at the port and all four thousand of your people come with you into the little bitty town. No, no. We don't. In all fairness, the cruise I went on, it uh, went into was in the Mediterranean Sea, and we went to Rome and Naples and Pompeii okay. and Malta, yeah. and you know it was smaller groups. It, um, okay. We, I did. A, I've done a walking tour of Rome because of it, so you know we were broken off into very small groups. In fact. It was just me, my mum and my brother at one point just around. Mm. Oh, that now see that 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 kind of you only actually um, have I, one full day at sea. And I would do the um the ad that happens um before every episode of Masterpiece <laughs> on the, the river cruise. <laughs> yeah. If you watch Masterpiece on PBS, you get a river, a Viking River cruise ad before everything. And so it's like, yeah, I want to go on that <laughs> up, up the European rivers. But no, I, I don't want to go to Cozumel. Oh, Nordic cruise through the fjords and then you end up at the places where the northern lights are. That's the mm. I would do that. Anywho, I'm going on a bend with Garrett. I? <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm a little bit disappointed here in that no one, no one has leaned into the coming of age. Because that's what Garrett's tour was. Yeah. I'm oh, I'm yeah. a little I'm a little upset that nobody went there. But I think it's because it's YA. We don't want to go there. But that's exactly what Garrett did when he went on oh, his yeah. coming of age tour. So oh. I mean, don't don't go near Garrett with a UV light. It, it's not appropriate. I'm just upset that nobody went there. You did, so it's fine. Oh, okay, that's right. You're right. You're yeah. right. <laughs> You're right. It's fine. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess, I guess, I. That's like that's not Messine. I'm upset that nobody went there and nobody made that joke except for me. But I feel like I would have to go on like a regular coming of age tour. I'd have to be like the boring one, 
because I'm not super into drinking and fucking. <laughs> so I'm just I'm going to regular, regular boring old coming of age door. Well, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I can see your point because, you know, you do reach a certain age when you're like, you want to stay out to how late? Yeah. Can, can we, Can't I just, I like, go and help? you all at, at midnight because I was like, oh, my God. They won't go home. Everybody, they, they don't want to go home, and I found a place to set, and, and I'm reading a book on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> So can't I just, like, <laughs> go and help people? And that's what I do. If if that's what you want to do, then that's fine. I'm just getting drunk with Garrett. I'm not doing anything else. And it's been a long, 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 long time since I've been even tipsy. So it's going to be one drink and I'll be, t- I'll be asleep. I, you know, I I do like my whiskey. Um, So I can... I can hang with Garrett for a while, you know. Yeah. We'll, I just we, drink we, Dr. Coffees, it's fine. And then we'll know, you know, there's that moment when you go, no, nope, that's it. It's time to stop. Like, stop right. it now. Mm-mm. Done. No more. Done, yeah. To be fair, I think it'd be quite early on, Garrett will be absolutely bladdered and then he'd find companionship and he'd bugger off and fuck whoever he's found. So you just kind of sit in there and go, you know what? I'm just going to get my book out. Thank you. I think that's fine. I feel like there should have been a sea shanty or something involved. At some point. There'll definitely be some dirty sea shanties. I was listening to sea shanties yesterday. Weirdly. (laughs) The the, the hubby just randomly put on. It's a Canadian, French Canadian band called the Dreadnoughts. And I was like, what am I listening to? And they were singing sea shanties in French, but then they changed to English as well. I highly recommend it. It was very entertaining. I was thinking today I needed to get out my um, um, pi- my the my CD, uh, my music from the, the pirate bands from the Renaissance Fair um, and listen to Drunken Harpy, Ooh. which is Full of double entendres. That is and triple wonderful. entendres. <laughs> um, Drunken. I feel like a couple of weeks ago, I was. Um, we were talking. Uh, well, we went to see um, the the band, the Decemberists, and they have a sea shanty called the Mariner's Revenge. I like. We were talking about that in our group chat together a couple yeah. weeks ago. But also, then there's. That that other musical group, um, Turquoise Jeep, that I really like, and then they have the song. It's a it's a pirate song. Treat me like a pirate and give me that booty. <laughs> Possibly the best name <laughs> song in the world ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How'd we get here? What happened? If you like this, I... we've re- recommended that. <laughs> right. If you liked this, try this. We're not there yet. It's oh. not. It's not. It's not time for that yet. For <laughs> once, we're actually covering music. Anywho, we're on to question four. Are we? I think so. Yes. Would you rather make a deal with a sea witch to have legs or to find your family? As I have pointed out on numerous occasions, um, come from a fucked up family so there's no i didn't know i don't want to find them people fuck them <laughs> fuck them now we'll we'll take the legs and and move on out of there i like it do i get take the legs the shape of the legs take the legs and run <laughs> take the legs and run take the legs and run don't look back perfect take the legs and run and don't look back you need the legs to run. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, yeah. Take the legs and run. I don't think you can't beat that response. Let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing better than that. Next question. <sighs> Happy to help. God, Annie, you're so good. <laughs> 
so glad you're on this episode with us. I, I, when it comes to things piratey and and talking smack about family, I am, oh, I am there. It's perfect. We need to find a book that's just talking smack about family. We do. It's delightful. We do. Oh, anywho, do you want to answer this or should we just move on? No, because there's it was possibly the greatest answer. There's ever. nothing better than take <laughs> the legs and run. <laughs> Last question. <laughs> I'm just going to hand over to Annie to, to, to answer. Would you rather give a seashell of your blood to a sea witch, which may adversely impact your descendants, but you save your beloved, or give your life to the sea witch and enter into servitude with her, becoming one with the ocean, but not knowing how you will be treated? I'm... I... And very proudly, child free by choice. Woo! So, same, same. Same. Uh, I am happy to be an auntie. I am like an awesome auntie. Um, so I, you know, descendants. I'm not actually going to have any. So, other than the ones that I take in and whatnot. So no, I just. Don't care about them, no. <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll just yeah take seashell, just a little seashell shell of blood, and you know if somebody down the line is a problem, well it'll build character. They'll they'll sort it out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah. You don't know she's up to you evil with that. You can have some character building curses and tentacles. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's fine. And you don't know don't she's care. gonna do something bad with that seashell of blood. I mean, maybe she just. Want a seashell of blood for for funsies, for funsies, you know. Vampire as well. Oh, she might be a vampire, a vampire sea witch because we're all vampires all the time. Yeah. Yes. So she might be a vampire sea witch. Why the heck yeah. not? Why the heck not? Yeah. So yeah, we're yeah, and I don't don't want to be in service to anyone. See the the. <laughs> previous comment about taking the legs <laughs> Amanda, I feel like you had the same response. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to become one with the sea because then I will be beautiful and terrible and be able to be like cause shipwrecks and gain power and I might be entering into servitude for X amount of time. But eventually, I'll overthrow the bitch, and I will be the sea witch. You'll be making some bargains with. Yeah, I just you would be an excellent sea witch. I could see you as in that. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to be a monster. So you can be my kraken. Thanks. All right. <laughs> I yeah. I really just. I really just feel like. Oh. Would you rather should have ended taking the legs and running that just should have been the end we should have just been like you know done there is you no can more. cut that out you can you can cut that other stuff out yeah so, just end it know. just end it there that's all that just end it. bye folks <laughs> and cool that's the end okay um favorite final thought quote what have we got some good ones go first, I would, huh do you want to go first? I feel sure. like you should. I was singing. You were caterwauling. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see. Um, I want to be alone together with you. Oh, that was like, oh it's precious. Just, yeah. You're, you got your baggage. I got mine. We'll just come together and we'll care. I'll carry it. It'll be awesome. Um, let I, I love the I've got two and they're kind of the same, but I like the um um he had a merman who had never left the side of the sea, who had a bounty on his head, a forbidden magic under his skin, a family in mourning, a snake in his household, a kingdom on the brink of war. 
and he had more to think about than puffs of breath skirting across the skin of his neck and a lean body pressed against his back. Mm. So I like the listing of all the things. And then there, then the, my last one is they kissed and kissed and Tal would have thought it was a fairy tale if not for the sand in his collar, the water in his boots and the ache of his body, but he wouldn't trade it for anything else. <sighs> Cause you know, the the sea looks all romantic and everything until you get sand in your delicate bits. No, really like sand where it chips. No. No, yeah. So yeah. Do you wanna mm. do you wanna share yours, Claire? I have four quotes. Okay. Yes. Four. Three for fun and one not. Okay. The first one's Garrett. No what is comforting? Mead and ale and companionship. <laughs> Good. Tal, I make exceptions for myths from the sea. Oh yeah, you do. Everyone will make an exception for a myth from the sea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then my favourite Athlan quote. Well, you nice to look at. Of course I am. I'm a woman. He winked. <laughs> of course I am. They're pretty. They're always pretty. Yeah. <laughs> and Tal's life lesson throughout the entire book is now we must control the narrative. Mm. And I like that. I like the idea of taking control of the narrative, especially, you know, in, you know, modern world is so crappy in a lot of respects. Uh, it, sometimes you've got to try and grasp it and take hold of it and change it to what you need it to be. Sometimes you got to take the legs and run. Sometimes you have to take the legs and run. <laughs> what have you got? I feel like I feel like all of mine are just kind of precious this time. Well, you've got to have your cinema holes in your California. Yeah. Um, she'd known about Tao even before he told her that he was attracted to the athletic squires and the beautiful ladies of the court and those who identified somewhere in between. She'd merely smiled and cupped his reddened cheeks and her jeweled fingers and told him he was fortunate to have so many people to choose from for his potential spouse when and if he wanted one. And whoever he did choose would be lucky to have him. That is the most just wonderful, lovely thing in this book. Yeah. That that just, it just gives you all the feels and touches your heart because really? it's just so yeah. wonderful. Yeah. I want to live in that world. Yeah. Um, I also like, we were wrong to think your soft heart was a weakness. And also, the world isn't kind, but that doesn't mean I can't be. It's true. I know. I I know they were all precious this time. I I, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Just picked precious. Something's things. knocking at the, the 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 door of your heart and going, "Hello, Hi. hello, Hi. delivery." You, you can, you know, we can go back to spooky soon. I mean, we need to. We need next week. Don't actually, worry. Actually, we're gonna go back to dark when we talk when we for next vampire book club because it went dark. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll be back there. Okay. Um, next month's Halloween month. Yay, this is the woo! first month of Halloween, though. September is the first month of Halloween. Yes. All right. Um, if you liked this, try this. What are we suggesting? We're gonna slide in there. It's not our not our official one, but uh, for a merman, you really need to read Gail Carriger's Marine Biology. Uh, Marvin the Merman is delightful, and then just read all the read the entire thing. But my official one, my official choice, is because as soon as as I thought it, it was like, oh, you got to pick a if you like this, read this, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I, but you have to go with the audio because even she says, 
don't read my don't read the print copy of my book go get the audiobook because it's so wonderful yeah. um it's christian colson oh christian colson i love you and i watched an interview with him um before the last book in the in the, that series came out and he talked about the different ways that he did the narration and about how that when he does uh monty he gets all like laid back and all like does it and then percy is like that yeah so he has like even the way he sits whilst he's recording features into it so but yeah so um this is the uh description is uh off of the author's website Henry Monty Montague was born and bred to be a gentleman, but he was never one to be tame. The finest boarding schools in England and the constant disapproval of his father haven't been able to curb any of his roguish passions, not for gambling halls, late nights spent with, bo with a bottle of spirits, or waking up in the arms of women or men. But as Monty embarks on his grand tour of Europe, his quest for a life filled with pleasure and vice is in danger of coming to an end. Not only does his father expect him to take over the family's estate upon his return, but Monty is also nursing an impossible crush on his best friend and traveling companion, Percy. Oh, Percy. Still, it isn't in Monty's nature to give up. Even with his younger sister, Felicity, in tow, he vows to make this year-long escapade one last hedonistic hurrah and flirt with Percy from Paris to Rome. But when one of Monty's reckless decisions turns their trip abroad into a harrowing manhunt that spans across Europe, it calls into question everything he knows, including his relationship with the boy he adores. It is delightful. It has romance and pirates and swashbuckling and and all sorts of shenanigans it's just it's just one of my favorite things and as i say it is one that i love in audio and so i don't even have a print copy i just i have the audiobook um the entire series is kind of along the it's a trilogy i'm sorry um there's more pirates in the second book, which is the sister story. Mm -hmm. And so it has a woman's narrator. And then the third book goes um, to the third son and it goes back to um, Christian Coulson. Yeah. So, and Percy and Monty are somewhere in this. That's wonderful. But yes, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. I'm really glad you picked that one. And I honestly thought Claire was going to read that one. I thought she was gonna pick that one, so I'm glad. I'm glad that you picked that one. I was gonna. I really was gonna, but I had an inkling that it was gonna be Annie pick that one because yep. of conversations that we've had about it. Yeah. I uh, yeah. I because I've like talked about it billions of times. Of yeah. when people when I when you get to talking about books and there's a pirate, the gentleman's kind of nice virtue, which has been covered on this podcast. It has. It has been. Was it in the before times? Yes. Yeah, it was in the before However, times. Felicity's book has me on it. It, it does. Has me in it. it does. It's wonderful. It was my first was ever appearance first, on the podcast. Your first time you've been on the show. I was in the Would You Rathers. All right. Claire? Do you want to share yours? Yes. Um, I have gone for um, a retelling. And it, I was looking at a list on epicreads.com and it's YA queer retellings that might be even better than the classics. And it was a very interesting list, so I do actually highly recommend people check it out. And the one that stood out for me, I haven't read it, was because um, I have read the originals. And it's a retelling of The Three Musketeers. I thought I was. I thought when I was a teenager, I'd be all intellectual. So I read the Three Musketeers and uh, the Man in the Iron Mask. And this one is called One for All by uh, Lily Leonoff. And the summary is from Black Wolf because it's shorter than what was on the white of like epicreeds.com. And mine was long. It was like 
<laughs> oh no, I just I get lazy when I'm reading these, <laughs> especially because there's a lot of French and I as Mademoiselle Montrolli Montrolli said, I have a worse French accent. Tanya de Bats is most herself with a sword in her hand. Everyone thinks she, her dizziness makes her just a sick girl, but she wants to be a fencer like her father, a former musketeer. Then Papa is mysteriously murdered, and as his dying wish, he sends Tanya to finishing school. Ooh. Ooh. But La Académie de Maraz is so much more. It's a training ground for new musketeers, women who are socialites on the surface, but who seduce men into giving up secrets and don't shy away from sword fights. Tanya finally feels like she's found her sisters, a place where she belongs, but when she's torn between duty and dizzying emotion, she must decide where her loyalties lie or risk losing everything. It also reminds me of our current excessively British read-throughs of the Finishing School series mm-hmm. by Gail Carriger. Um, and I thought this was an appropriate place to put both of them together into the little mixing pot. It just sounds wonderful. It does, doesn't it? What have you got, Amanda? I went completely different. Um, ah. The mm-hmm. one that I chose, it's such a good series and I really, really like it. Um, it's called Of Poseidon by Anna Banks. And it's not anything like either of yours. <laughs> what you doing? Galen is the prince of the Sirena, sent to land to find a girl he's heard he can communicate with fish. Emma is on a vacation at the beach. When she runs into Galen, literally, ouch, both teens sense a connection, but it will take several encounters, including a deadly one with a shark, for Galen to be convinced of Emma's gifts. Now, if only he can convince Emma that she holds the key to his kingdom. Ooh. Is the kingdom his penis? <laughs> <laughs> his penis might be involved. Um... I read this one a while ago. Uh, one of, gosh, it was it was a while ago. One of my teens, when I was a teen librarian in West Palm Beach, suggested this one, and it was great. And we learned that Galen, he's he's a merman, but we learned that his tail goes side to side like a shark's. So I just, I just really liked that. So, Do you know what I'm very surprised we haven't mentioned? The fictional hangover merlion, which is the correct way any merfolk should be. Yes. Fish head, lion butt. Yes. Gosh. It's the merlion. Anywho, Indie Spotlight, what do you get? Okay, so um, this one is called Monsters Born and Made by Tanvi Burwa. 16-year-old Coral and her older brother, Emmerich. Oh my gosh, Emmerich! (gasps) Hashtag tenuous link! Hashtag tenuous link! Is he from Texas? Oh no. (laughs) Are we going to go to the honky-tonk? We are. We're going to honky-tonk with Emmerich. We can go to the honky tonk with Garrett. We can. We should. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. 16 year old Coral and her older brother Emmerich risk their lives each day to capture the monstrous Maristags that live in the black seas around their island. They have to, or else their family will starve. In an oceanic world swarming with vicious beasts, the Landers, the ruling elite, have indentured Coral's family to provide the Maristags for the glory race, a deadly chariot tournament reserved for the upper class. The winning contender receives gold and glory. The others, if they're lucky, survive. When the last Maristag of the year escapes and Coral has no new Maristag to sell, her family's financial situation takes a turn for the worse and they can't afford medicine for their chronically ill little sister. Coral's only choice is to do what no one in the world has ever dared, cheat her way into the glory race. 
But every step of the way is unpredictable as Coral races against contenders, including her ex-boyfriend, who have trained for this their whole lives and who have no intention of letting a low-caste girl steal their glory. When a rebellion rises and rogues attack Coral to try and force her to drop out, she must choose her life or her sister's before the whole island burns. She grew up battling the monsters that live in the Black Seas, but it couldn't prepare her to face the cunning cruelty of the ruling elite. Mm. So that's it for this episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. And I'm Vigilante. (laughs) (laughs) Join us next time as we discuss Clown in a Cornfield 2 by Adam Caesar. Mm, Yay, we've gotten back into the blood and guts and I'm so excited. (laughs) <laughs> Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club, The Monthly Challenges, on Facebook. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite fictional hangover-themed merchandise and become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. Yo-ho! 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 A pirate's life for me. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com. Follow us on Instagram at fictionalhangover. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictionalhangover. And on Twitter at fictionalhangover, no ER. If you like this episode, check out our others. A rate, review and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks for listening. <laughs>